guys, it's Ifeyawa and welcome back to my garden. In today's video, I thought that I would do a quick update for you guys. It's been four and a half months since I officially started my apartment balcony garden. And the summer is pretty much over, so I thought that I would come on here and share a little bit about everything that I've learned since then. The ups, the downs, the wins and the losses. I wanted to come back and just reflect on everything with you guys. It's really cold actually. So I have my blanket here. Summer said I'm out like two weeks ago and it's been unfortunately a really short lived summer here in the UK. But if you're not already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. I share so many different ways to improve your life and to help you live a more mindful life. And gardening has been that in so many ways for me. But if you're interested in learning about similar things and other things, then make sure you're subscribed to this channel. So first things first, if you haven't already watched the video where I set up my garden, I would definitely recommend that you watch that video first. I actually posted my video about a month into my journey. So now we're about three and a half months since the end of that video. Hopefully that makes sense. Filming outside is the worst idea, but I have a microphone this time around, so hopefully you can hear me. So everything was going really smoothly for the longest time. If you guys remember, my aloe vera gel that I was really concerned about ended up thriving. <laughs> uh, one of my cousins actually joked that my aloe vera gel had a BBL because she's getting thick. Like she's just sprouting and growing and it's been so amazing to see her finally well, in my mind, she's a her. But it's been so amazing to see her finally happy. I feel like for the longest time, I just didn't really know what to do with my aloe vera gel plant. So that was a really good win for me. My lettuce as well, amazing. I was able to get two harvests out of one of my lettuce plants and one harvest out of another. Um, I think I may have done something wrong with that one because based on my research here, she should be able to get at least two cycles out of lettuce every season. But um, I may have done something wrong with that. So the lettuce was doing really well. The aloe vera was doing really well. All my herbs, gosh, my mint went crazy. My mint actually completely took over the section where it was. Someone actually commented about that mint does that. And she or he, thank you so much, you are not lying. My mint started to flower, which I was really excited about. And then um, one of my friends actually saw that I had put that up on my Instagram and she commented that apparently when mint starts to do that, that means that it's losing its flavor. So it's a good time to trim it. So that was all the excuse I needed. So I just went hacking up my mint. It was growing so much faster than I could ever use it. So uh, definitely make sure you like mint before you decide to grow it because it takes over everything. Um, my rosemary and my thyme as well are doing really well, as well as my lemon verbena, I think is how you say it. I finally found a use for that in my self-care routine video, so I will link that in the cards as well. So all the herbs are doing really well. The spring onions, oh gosh, the spring onions like vomit onions. <laughs> like every time I come out and I chop off some onions, I come back the next day and they're sprouting. So those plants I would recommend for beginners, 100%. The lettuce and the herbs were wins for me. In addition to aloe vera, probably anything in that family would be a really easy thing to grow. My tomatoes as well are doing really well. I actually have a clip on the first time I saw a tomato on my plant and I can't even describe the joy. It was honestly like a gut reaction. I was just going through my plants and I saw a tomato and I couldn't get over how many there were. I still haven't been able to harvest any of them but they've, they're just growing bigger every day and they're growing yellow and I'm really hoping, I'm looking back at them right now, yep, they're actually orange right now and it's really promising. I'm just hoping that I'm able to get some ripe tomatoes before it gets too cold outside. I, I don't even know like how tomatoes do in cold weather. Please let me know. Honestly, we've had really, really up and down weather this summer. We've had highs of 35 degrees and days like today where I literally have a blanket and we've had really strong winds and it's just been really unstable weather conditions. So I'm really happy that 
some things have been able to survive considering I just keep watering them and I've been feeding my plants as well. I aim to feed them every seven to 10 days and I still aim to water every two days, every, all of them excluding my aloe vera gel. And obviously I forget, I have my days where I go maybe three days or four days without watering them. But for the most part, they've been really resilient, except a few tragedies that I've had. So I picked up a carrot plant from home base, like I mentioned before, and that just never took off. That died very slowly after. So that made two plants that died, first one being my cucumber, my second one being my carrot. So my strawberries were another loss, I would say. At one point, it looked like they were starting to do really well. I actually had a picture that I had taken and then I feel like I came out a few days after and they had all kind of shriveled up and died. I'm really sad that I didn't even get one strawberry. <sighs> now I have to get into the biggest loss. I had a huge aphids attack. Honestly, in the very beginning, I had no idea what it was, but I noticed that my pepper plants had this odd substance on it that to me I thought was actually mold. I was so confused as to what it was so I took some pictures and I put it on my Instagram I just asked if anyone knew what it was. I'm really lucky I have a few friends that really know their stuff with gardening and one of my friends told me that she thought it was aphids. She suggested that I cut off a leaf and take it to my local garden center and get them to confirm what it was and to offer some remedy. So that's exactly what I did. Once the guy at my garden center saw it, he brought out his magnifying glass and he was like, yep, they're 100% aphids. And he recommended a product to me to use to spray all over my plants and said that that should get it under control unless it's too far gone. And that's pretty much all he said. So this is the insecticide that I got. This honestly was not the one he recommended in all fairness to him, but this was the only one that he had that was organic, so I picked it up. And so I got back home and I chopped all the leaves off that had a lot of aphids on. And then I just started spraying my pepper plants. And honestly, it just never seemed to pick up. I would always find more aphids every time I would go out and it was one of those things where it was starting to really not upset me but it was definitely starting to disappoint me because I had I was really excited about growing peppers especially the scotch bonnet peppers I was very excited about that and as the weeks went on the plants just did not seem to be coping well. I don't know if I was using too much insecticide I was kind of just spraying them whenever I would see aphids which was pretty much God, turning out to be every other day and then at one point I decided to separate them from the rest of my plants because I had started to see aphids on my lettuce plants well not my lettuce plants but on my kale and spinach plants so that completely freaked me out so then I separated my pepper plants and they honestly never recovered they started to just look really sickly and pale and a few weeks ago, I kind of came to the conclusion that it was too far gone, like the man at the garden center had said, and I decided to just bury my pepper plants. And that was really sad, I'm not going to lie. So I have brooded both of them, and just looking at the root balls, like you could see how much they had grown from what they were originally, and it was just crazy to see how something that is so out of my control just took over those two plants. And I had done so much research on what I could do to the aphids and all the recommendations were to like spray the aphids off with a high pressure hose. Well, obviously I can't do that. I live, my garden's on a balcony. And I also had done some research into the neem sprays. And I honestly feel like if I had spotted the aphids early enough, I would have been able to tackle them with the neem spray or with the insecticide. But because I only realized it when they were there were so many of them i feel like that's probably what caused the issues i will still try to grow peppers again i just don't know what i can do besides be hyper vigilant and just hope that this doesn't happen next time but that was really really upsetting so my kale and my spinach again they were affected by the aphids and they kind of just started to yellow a little bit so i don't really know 
what's going on with those if I'm really honest with you. All in all, I think the kale looks like it's good enough to eat. My sweet potato plants are the last plant that I want to update you guys on and they honestly, one in particular, grew so much that my husband started to freak out because he thought that they were going to like grow into the flooring of the balcony or something like that. They just completely took off. So I'm really excited about potentially harvesting an actual fruit that's not green or a vegetable that's not green. So I was doing some research to find out when I could know when my potatoes are ready. And apparently when the plants start to flower, if you give it two weeks after that, that's a good enough time. So I'm gonna show you guys all my plants right now and we're going to see if we can find any flowers. And hopefully that will mean that I'm able to harvest them at least before the temperatures drop too much. So I think that's it. Now we can get into a tour. Okay guys, so that's my aloe plant. And this is my kale. So I think it's good enough to harvest. Please let me know if you know. And this is my spinach that, honestly, I think I would classify this as a, as a fail. <laughs> I don't think it survived. Um, I noticed that it was being attacked by the aphids at one point. But I don't know what all that stuff is. That, that looks like aphids over there, yeah. So it looks like the aphids got them too. I really hate aphids, guys. This is by bay leaf plant. Honestly, it just kind of does its own thing. Doesn't really seem to grow. There we have my, what is this again? My thyme. I actually use that a lot in cooking. I think this has probably been my most useful herb, so I would recommend that. That's my rosemary plant. I had to hack at it too because it started to grow out of control. <laughs> So here is my second harvest of lettuce. And honestly, I'm pretty impressed. It's really big. And on this side, we have the strawberries that I was telling you about and they just never really took off. Like that one just shriveled up. And then verbena or verbena as well is really happy. This used to be my second lettuce plant that never started to grow again. So that's just kind of dried up over there. And that's my mint plant. Before, it was literally taking over this entire shelf. On the bottom, I still have my two um, sweet potato plants. So there's one, and the other one's over there, and that's the one that's huge. So all those leaves are all sweet potatoes. <laughs> so I'm gonna check them and see if I can find any flowers. We'll do that together. Then nothing's in that pot. I think that used to have the carrots. Yeah, that used to have the carrots and that's been taken out. And then of course, those are my tomatoes. The tomatoes I think have been fairly easy to grow too. I don't wanna jinx anything, but I haven't had too many problems with them. Look at all those tomatoes, guys. It's amazing. You remember how small this plant used to be? And my staking? <laughs> <laughs> my makeshift staking seems to be working. I actually went in with some plastic from some shopping bags. I tied the stems to the stakes because before they were kind of just growing everywhere. And then look at these baby ones, they're still coming in. Like this has been a really exciting plant for me. <laughs> so I don't know if this is how big they're gonna get because I know that you can find orange tomatoes. So maybe this is as big as it gets, I don't know. All right, so let's do some digging into this sweet potato. So it's pretty long. These are all the leaves that this one little plant is producing, but something seems to be eating these leaves. So if anybody knows what this is, please let me know. But I can't see any flowers. So I guess it's not ready to harvest. Aww. All right guys, so that is it for my garden update video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I really don't know what happens from here on out, but I am obsessed with gardening. Next year, I really want to grow some plants from seeds. So whenever I start doing that, I will make sure that I am documenting that for you too. 
I really wish I lived in a country that had good weather all year round, especially with gardening, but just in general. But um, whatever happens, please make sure you are subscribed to this channel so that you don't miss out any content. And head over to my Instagram. I'm at Ifeawa on there. And my garden highlight is probably my longest highlight. So there's a lot of content on there. And you can pretty much follow my journey of how I started this garden and where we are up until now. So thank you guys so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you like it if you did. And I will see you very soon in another video. Stay blessed, stay safe, and take care. Why you wanna get up?